to Guanajuato. If this burst of hillside colour isn't enough inspiration for an absolutely cracking meal, I don't know what is. So oh, you reckon that's the house of someone famous? Yeah, because uh, I think I think it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the girl I told you, the one that's kind of like opera singer. Yeah. Uh, the one that had the churreria. Yeah. I think she is the owner. I'm not 100 percent sure. Oy. That's Salvador, by the way. He's uh, helping us out on our journey. Slash, we're going to be uh, feasting together, and he's going to be helping me cook. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. So apparently, that's the house of someone famous. Maybe an opera singer who owns a place that sells really nice churros. We'll find out. We, we just found out, yeah. and it wasn't someone's famous house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a, a girl called Sheila who used to be a painter, but now it's a, a hotel and kind of like a bar or like a restaurant. That's a damn nice bar and restaurant. It looks freaking cool. But completely out of place, but it just seems to be this ability to do whatever the hell you want with your house in this place. The bursts of colours all over that hillside. We headed through vibrant and colourful streets to the centre of town to get a feel for it and discussed food along the way. Basically, uh, we have these shops in, I guess, around the cold country mm -hmm. uh, where they have these machines to make tortillas. Uh, and uh, you go there, uh, you normally when you're a kid, your mom sends you uh, to get like a kilo, two kilos, I don't know, depending on the family. And normally, uh, the tortilla man uh, put the kilo on the on the scale, uh, take the first tortilla, uh, put some salt, roll it, and give it to you. And it's called like a, a burrito. <laughs> so I remember being a kid, uh, every time going for the tortillas, yeah. having a burrito and a kilo of tortillas. <laughs> so we're going to try and hit up a tot tortilleria, tortilleria, yeah. tortilleria and uh, pick up some tortillas, much in the same way that Salvador used to do as a child. So Guanajuato has a whole lot of tunnels, just all connecting, all different streets, and you can go up and down levels. But apparently the spirit of Yarona exists in these tunnels. She lost her children and she wanders through the tunnels screaming out for her children. It was very dramatic. <laughs> like Mexicans. Yeah. <laughs> we watch a lot of telenovela. While aimlessly filming a little bit of B-roll, I walked over to find Salvador, wheeling and dealing, trying to enlighten us with a little bit of culture. gist of this is follow around a band called uh, Estudiantinas or something like that and just go from street to street listening to music. It's pretty neat and it's unlike anything. As the parade progresses through Guanajuato's undulating alleyways, stories are told and theatrics are definitely encouraged. Oh. 
The journey culminates in a flourish of romanticism that perfectly encapsulates what this city is about. Upon first glance, this has to be my favourite Airbnb ever. This Airbnb's got absolutely everything. It's got a working stove with gas hobs and an oven. It's got a water filter. It's got a beautiful, massive fridge. It's got pots and pans. It's got pops of color absolutely everywhere. Couches to relax on, beautiful beds, decor, and plates. Oh my God, the plates, they're beautiful. And then finally, we've got upstairs. But first, we had a day to seize. A rickety bus into town. A guy in a van passionately yelling facts over his shoulder. Us ascending the walls of the valley to the statue of El Pipila, who stuck it to the Spanish by burning down the door of the Spanish barricades with only a long flat stone strapped to his back for protection. Now that's passion. Starting and diving at breakneck speed through perilous twists and turns to the local torture museum, where we engaged in some casual torture. <laughs> Alright, so we are officially in the markets and we're on the hunt for a few things. Because what we've got on, on, we've been talking about the food and we're going to look for something that's going to be nothing, nothing overly complicated. I've got a few things in mind. Si? Sí. Sí. Muchas gracias. Uh, so we've got about a kilo of limes coming up. Half kilo. Half kilo of limes yeah. coming up. And on top of that I'm going to order some tomatoes and cebolla. This is going to be a proper feast. Uh, Chicken was the cheapest thing we bought so far. <laughs> oh, pimenton. Alright, so we went about this ass about face, but uh, now we're just finishing up at the markets. We've got a whole lot of stuff. We're basically going to get, we've got a few tortillas, 24 of them, and we're absolutely smashing it out with some uh, blackened chicken. We've got some roasted tomato salsa. We're going to do some stuff with um, Oaxaca queso, and we're going to try and do a bit of it over the grill. Yeah, so uh, as it turns out, you can have charcoal, but getting them lit, that's another story. So for a good chunk of this, I spent a lot of time out in the streets looking for a lighter fluid or just anything to get those coals started. And so, because of that, we're going to set a timer. That is an indication of how long this took. All right, so here is what we've got from the markets. We bought the entire market. So, starting on the left. On the left, we're going to have a nice green salsa or like a sauce. 
got a few um, jalapenos to put in there, a little bit of garlic and some green tomatoes, a bit of coriander too. Then next to that, we've got a uh, bunch of tomatoes here. Now with these tomatoes, I'm gonna be roasting these in the oven and getting them nice and black and super sweet. I'm gonna be chopping that up with a bit of the uh, onion here and also some lime and coriander. Now, on to the main part, chicken. We've got four chicken legs, so that's thighs and drums in there. We're gonna score those, and we're gonna rub in a few of these spices. We've got onion powder, we've got a little bit of cinnamon, we've got some pimenton, and we've also got pickled chipotles. So we're gonna be mashing those up and then forming a paste and letting that marinate while we prep everything else. Moving on, we're gonna have a bit of a guacamole. Now that guacamole is gonna have five avocados, it's gonna have a little bit of tomato, maybe some lime, definitely some coriander, and finally, we're gonna even mix, we're gonna mix in a little bit of this uh, sour cream, just to give it a little bit of an extra kick, a little bit of a twist. After that, Salvador's got asadero cheese. It uh, comes in a big knot, and they sort of like roll it all up. He's gonna make something with that. I'm not sure what he's gonna do yet, but he'll figure it out, I'm sure. And we finally, we've got um, some cactus. We're gonna give that a scoring, a little bit of salt and pepper, stick it on the grill. And then we got these from the lovely old lady by the corner. Homemade tortillas, but not by us. And then the spring onions are gonna get chopped and also grilled. And I keep saying grilled because upstairs we've got a little grill. And we've also got some charcoal. And we're gonna let rip. Do a bit of cooking on the roof. So we're getting to that grilling stage now. We've got the tomatillos with the uh, onions, we've got a bit of coriander there, we've got limes, we've got guacamole ready to go, we've got sosa rojo, we've got the chicken that's about to get on the grill, we've got cactus, we've got more peppers, we've got spring onions, we've got the beautiful ropey long cheese, and all that, it's all gonna come together, and uh, Salvador is gonna show us exactly what to do. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get this stuff on the grill. So the chicken's done and that's now warming. Now Salvador's got all the green stuff on. That's gonna, gonna become a sauce. That's gonna get chopped up and is gonna go into some tortillas. And then all this, well, I don't know really quite what he's doing yet, but he's gonna sort it out, right? So we're gonna put a bit of chicken in the... Quesadillas? Yeah. Uh, and then, just make it a bit twist, and then we have a bit of pomegranate, jalapenos, and coriander. Yeah. And the other two are gonna be just plain quesadillas. Yeah. Delicious, okay. Cool. Super. Cool, so let's uh, rig those up then. Yeah. All right, so we're done. We've got quesadillas with nice, beautiful cheese that's melted all the way through with a bit of coriander and some uh, chicken and maybe even a little bit of pomegranate for a bit of a twist. We've got um, some grilled uh, cactus. We've got a beautiful guacamole that I explained before. We've got the tomatillo sauce. We've got the salsa roja. We've got the chicken and we've got some little grilled additions right here. So everything's ready. And now these two, after patiently waiting, can dig in. We were finally getting to eat, but by this stage, we were approaching a ridiculous four hour cook time. Stop. The furrowed brow, the angle in which he dives at that quesadilla. Hell, I may even see a tear in his eye. This is the look of a man who thought he would never eat again. All right, now eagle-eyed viewers may notice that uh... There's a distinct lack of bugs, and that's because I don't really like them, so I've left them out. 
But look at them go. Wolfing it down. All right, now it's my turn. We've got way too much food. Wish you were here. So Salvador, how Mexican was last night's food? Uh, I think we did pretty well. Just some quick quesadillas, salsas, and yeah, we did well. Yeah. Deserve a high five? Totally. <laughs> Hell yes. Do you like it? Yeah, I like it. Cool. So, um, basically last night we weren't trying to do anything like too revolutionary. Putting more of uh, the feast into Airbnb feast. Uh, yeah, it was pretty damn delicious to be honest. But that's part of what this experience has been about. It's about taking the preconceptions of what Mexican food is like overseas and then breaking it down in Oaxaca and then deciding that, all right, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to learn from, we're going to learn what real Mexican food is like and then use those lessons and cook a feast. And that's exactly what we did. So, mission accomplished. This guy's super famous. We're in his house at the moment. And this here, that's his kitchen. <laughs> Would love to Airbnb in this place. All right, so what flavors have we, we got we here? Are, uh, so we have uh, seafood, yep. which is prawns, uh, prawns, uh, uh, calamari. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like chili and limey. Yeah, it's yeah. actually quite nice. Yeah. And then we have avocado. Mm -hmm. Avocado, corn, cheese, nuts, uh, cajetas, like cajetas, like, yeah. Uh, how, how do you say cajeta? It's like, oh, totally forgot. No idea. Like By the way, we're, we're talking about ice cream here. All right, so the flavors I've chosen are uh, carambullo. What is carambullo? It's like a cactus fruit. Cactus fruit and uh, avocado. And then we've got cheese and pistachio. And then you've got jello corn and milky rice. <laughs> Love it. Bloody beautiful. But as with every trip, quaint and cobbled and colourful streets give way to the throng of the city. Markets and cars and boulevards and buildings and aromatic fatigue. A density of culture dashed by my hunt for Imodium. Weary but reluctant steps towards the finish line. I've probably spent quite a few hours editing trying to figure out how to piece this, piece this puzzle all together. Trying to paint the broadest possible picture of Mexico that I can. But this is a message for future me. When you come to edit this, you're not going to be able to. And you've got to remember that. It's too broad and too varied for you to possibly wrap it all up into 10 to 20 minutes or however long it ends up being. You've only got the tools that I shot and that you've got on your computer. So do the best you can. And coming from me, current me, to everybody, the best you can do is to come and see as much as you can. Just cram it in. Food, sights, sounds, a lot of sounds. It's unlike anything else. <laughs>